In this video, we are looking at sequence and pattern. We are asked to complete the table. So the first thing we look at the first column and we see figures. We have figure 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then 15, then the end figure. In the second column, we have area of figure. No, so we need to identify what is a sequence or the pattern that is here to complete this section. So we look and see what is the relationship between the figure and the area. And we can see that when it is one, figure one, the area is one. When it's figure two, the area is four. Figure three, the area is nine. So we can identify and see that the sequence, we're actually squaring the figures. So here we're going to have four square, which is equal to 16. And here again, we follow the same sequence. So five squared is equal to 25. 15 squared, is equal to 225. Now for the end term, the end term which normally, when we are searching for the end term, it normally tells us the rule of the sequence. So here, because we're not given a value, the end term is going to be n squared. So any term that we want to find, all we need to do is to substitute it for n. Now we move on to the third column where we have per meter. Now we need to look and see if we can identify a sequence or a pattern. Now here we can see that the first number is always changing and the first number is always changing to be to correspond with the figure that is in column one. Now we can see that the six is constant and also the negative 2 is constant. So therefore, when we have figure 4, we write the 4, the time 6 is constant, the negative 2 is constant. So 4 times 6 is 24, minus 2 is 22. Now we follow the same concept. So when the figure is 5, it's going to be 5 times 6 minus 2. So therefore, this will be equal to 28. When the figure is 15, it's going to be 15 times 6 minus 2, which is equal to 88. Now, for the end, um, for the end figure, as I said before, it is always representing the rule of the sequence or the pattern that is given. Now for here, because we don't know the exact value, we're going to write n and we see that the 6 is constant, so times 6 minus 2, which this is equal to 6n minus 2, which is our final answer. So, for any term that we want to find the per meter, so if you want to know to substitute this for 10, if we have a figure and it's 10, we substitute n, so it's going to be 10 times 6 minus 2, which will give us 58. So, this is actually telling us the rule of the sequence. So, this is the rule for this column. And this is the rule for the third column. In this example, we are asked to find the values of A, B, and C and write the end term as an expression. So what we need to do here for the second question, they're actually asking us to find the rule of the sequence. Now, when we look at the first column, which is the diagram, 
So we have diagram one, two, three, and four. Then we skip all the way to the tenth diagram. Then we go down to C. So we don't know what is which diagram um, is C. Now, when we move to the second column, we now need to identify what is what is the relationship between the sequence. Now, when we look at the numbers, we see that it is increasing by 5. So, therefore, we have a common difference. So, what we need to do here In this example, we are asked to determine the values of A, B, and C. And for question 2, we are asked to find the nth term, or to write an expression to determine the nth term. Now, when we look at the first column, which represents a diagram, so we have diagram 1, 2, 3, and 4. Then we skip a few and we go down to the 10th diagram and then we don't know what is the last one. So we use C to represent it. Now, for the second column, we can easy well and see, we can see that, sorry, that there is a, there's a common difference. And the common difference here is 5. So we are counting by 5. So for A, the value is going to be 11 plus 5, which is 16. Now, for the rest of the questions here, if you notice that we skip a few terms, instead of writing out all of the terms to know what is going to be the 10th term, it is easier we find the rule of the sequence first, so we can complete question two first, and we go back to find B and C. Now, because we have a common difference, we can use the arithmetic progression formula. To find the rule of the sequence. And arithmetic Progression formula reads a plus open bracket n minus 2 times d, where a represents the first term in the sequence, n is the nth term, so it can be anything, and d represents a common difference. Now, the first term in the sequence is 1. Let's see if we can find the rule of the sequence is 1 plus n will remain minus 1 and the common difference is 5. So we write back our 1 plus 5 times n is 5n, 5 times minus 1 is minus 5, so we have 5n minus 5 plus 1. So the rule of the sequence here is 5n minus 4. So we can use the rule of the sequence now to answer the rest of the questions. Now, when we have the tenth diagram, all we're going to do for the tenth diagram where we see n, we're going to substitute it for 10. So it's going to be 5 times 10, which is 50, minus 4 is equal to 40. Six, and that is our answer for B. Now, 
B for C, it is a bit tricky. Now, when we look at the question, we have the number of squares, but we don't know what is the diagram or which diagram it represents. Now, because we have the rule of the sequence, which is 5n minus 4, all we need to do is to substitute what we know. We know that this is going to be, since we know that is C, the term that C represents, we're just going to put C minus 4, and the result that we receive here should be 76. Now, all we need to do now is to trans transpose to make C the subject of the formula, or the subject of the equation. So we take over the negative 4, so we have 5C is equal to 76 plus 4. So 5C is equal to 80. So we divide each side by 5. So therefore, our final answer, our final answer, C is equal to 16. So here we can go ahead and write the answer here is equal to 16. Hope you guys enjoy this lesson. I'll see you in the next session.